Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. As always, want to thank everybody for their support over on Patreon. We couldn't do it without you guys. Exclusive videos go up there every week. Very much appreciated. Thank you. Yes. And again, some deep dives, uh, plainly spoken. So the la last survey done by Gallup, which again, I don't think we could trust anything, including Gallup surveys. But hey, you know, what, what did it show? It showed that more people completely distrust and disregard the media uh, than even trust the media a little bit. Okay, more people distrust completely, don't believe anything that come from, comes from the mainstream media than even trusts them a little bit. Okay, and that's probably sugarcoating it. I mean, here we go. So if so many people distrust the media, how is the media staying in business? How are they doing it if so many people don't trust them? I don't know. It's almost like some some weird secret society might be funding it. I don't know. Well, the reality is, again, uh, it's it's the money of the control system, which, again, is is truly not monitored by anybody but the control system. So, you know, they can always fund whatever it is they want to fund. So, yeah, and as you can see, a list of hoaxes. So as much as they keep going and trying to uh, say, you know, this is not true, they, they have the terms, we're all familiar with those terms, and they censor uh, all of us that are trying to, you know, show the reality of what's going on because, again, what we talk about simply becomes the accepted truth a little bit later down the line by the majority of people, irregardless of what the official statements are from the power structure and the media. When you see what's what's happened in North Carolina as, um, you know, things, things there are actually in so many ways getting more dire and as there are so many people that are dependent right now on on open doors and shelters and you know they've lost their homes they've lost everything and it's really cold uh you know here we are and we're in the deep south and you know it was down into the low 40s and here it's way colder in those mountains i you know did spend a winter up there and uh in in these areas exactly where uh, they were the hardest hit and it, it's cold for a long time there and brutally cold, life-threatening cold. And so now you have so many people that are are really, really suffering in, in life-threatening situations. And, you know, the stories, again, just like in Maui, just like, you know, there's so many events. This is the problem. So many events going on that you always end up forgetting about the event that happened, you know, three or four major events ago because they're just nonstop. It's one after another after another. You know, here is you know, a man breaking down and crying over what he's seeing, what he's experiencing. Uh, you know, again, what we we're getting is the official narrative, which is not matching the narrative that's coming out from people that are actually there and and seeing it firsthand and so you know this is the way this this world system runs it's like i could talk to a friend that's there and and get their story from it and then i'm going to go turn on the news and whether it's msnbc or cnn or fox or some of these other ones you're going to see them saying something that's in opposition you know obviously certain leaning a certain direction are going to be uh, more untruthful than going the other direction. But they're going to say that what I just talked to my friend about is not the situation. So in other words, don't trust your friend that you've known for a long time and are actually there. Trust what these talking heads uh, are saying. And, you know, it doesn't work that way because, again, you know, fool me once, you know, that old story, fool me twice, well, They've been doing this dozens of times, dozens of times. And this is talking about uh, this young lady who is giving you uh, the facts. And, and we are going to, 
I'm going to play at least a portion of this because I think there's a lot of people that want to hear. Uh, she is in this area. This is her, Jax Stables. Jaxstables.com, two S's. Yes, jaxstables at gmail.com. And there's a phone number there, too. Um, so, you know, she's taken it upon herself to try to help in whatever way she can. As so many people, uh, these are some of the nicest people I've ever met anywhere. Honestly, you know, there's so many nice people all across the country and outside of this country, too. I, again, believe that it's just insanity uh, to, to look at any average person sampling of people in any country and think that because of what uh, we've been told by the political leadership that it's actually true. Uh, this control system is the biggest lying entity on the planet and it doesn't matter if we're talking about again any one particular government. It's really all governments. Yes, some are worse than others and you know growing up in the u.s here we we thought back in the 70s and 80s and maybe those that are st still around from the 60s you know as a childhood you know you grow up thinking that you're in the best country but best at what really you know the most wars uh dominating other countries militarily and economically really just carrying out the will of the banking cabal is is really what we've been doing and we, and we didn't realize many people didn't realize what we were really really doing all around the world making enemies with all these non-stop wars and now when it's you know happening to us with the quote-unquote natural <laughs> disasters and you know of course there's still that looming specter of ww3 out there it's just a messed up situation and the average people all over the world really would get along just fine i truly truly believe it i truly believe it there's very few what we would call demonically oriented people but they dominate politics and they dominate the media and you know they dominate the world stage as a whole so everything is so distorted and twisted well, it's a mess, but I do want people to listen to what she has to say. Now, she does have some type of a, a fund going on where she's uh, taking uh, donations and uh, they're using those donations to get resources out to people. I listen to her. I feel good about this place. Again, it's Jack's Stables. That's two S's in the middle at gmail.com. And th there's a number up there too. So please do your due diligence and give her a call. Or please send an email and figure out. Because I, I, she doesn't have like a GoFundMe. So I'm guessing people would have to send an email and find that information. But she feels very legitimate to me. Okay, so we're going to play a little bit of this and just share this with you. Whatever you think you know about Western North Carolina and what's going on over there, you're wrong, unless you're there. I've debated on if I even wanted to make this video because I don't really want to start a bunch of conspiracy theories or anything like that, but I do feel like word needs to get out about what is actually happening that news is not covering. So here's the facts. Um, I have been uh, assisting with running missions and dispatch for an operations team there for the last week. And last week I was assisting running those missions in Ash County. I've been in Swannanoa this week and we've been running 70 missions a day, getting help to these people that are not being helped right now. So when I tell you this is firsthand knowledge, this is firsthand knowledge. The death toll of 200 or 200-ish is, is what's being reported right now. That's not accurate. Um, my organization sent out 10,000 body bags to local authorities this, this week, and um, they're requesting more. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that all 10,000 of those has been used, but it does mean that they're finding a need um, and that they're thinking that they're going to need more. Um, I will tell you, you know, we've spoken to some of the funeral homes and refrigeration truck companies that have been brought in and there's, you know, a thousand in this town, 800 in this town, 500 in this town, and we're finding more bodies 
every day. This is this is an ongoing process. Um, my team has cadaver dogs that have been going out. We have med teams that are going out. Um, it's not only deaths from the storm, but deaths since the storm. There's a huge need, particularly in our Hispanic communities. A lot of them are scared. There's border patrol trucks driving around and they're scared to ask for help. We've lost two Hispanic children to hypothermia in our community this week because they they didn't know that help was out there for them and they don't know who to trust. Um, sorry. Um, so the the devastation in this area is beyond what anything that I've ever seen before. It's it's beyond what anybody that has lived it has seen before. We're, we're talking to survivors that rode their house a mile down the river. We're talking to people that sat there and told us about 40-foot walls of water looking like tsunamis coming through these towns that have never seen anything like this and they've lived there their entire lives. Elderly people are sitting here telling me that they rode their house down the river. Again, I don't want to get into conspiracy theories or uh, anything crazy, but as someone who has been there and, and been out there since basically the beginning uh, when this first started, I've spent two weeks in various locations and it's bad. The infrastructure is gone. They're talking about months before power is restored. We're going into winter. These people have no power. Their houses are unlivable. They're covered in mold, mildew. Everything's falling apart. They're sleeping in tents. They're sleeping on their porches. I mean, they're... <laughs> Help is, is coming, but it's it's hard when there's tens of thousands of people in these small towns that are being forgotten about. And we're, we're doing our best to help them. We have spent all week delivering heaters and propane and cook stoves and blankets and sleeping bags and hot meals and taking these people. We have shower trucks that we're taking them to, shuttling them back and forth. Um, we've been fixing people's driveways. We have large equipment crews out, crews out. We have chainsaw crews out, cutting trees off of people's houses, getting their roofs tarped up for them. Um, it, the community is out here and, and we are doing good things and we are helping them, but the need is so high and it will be for months and I'm, I'm worried that people are going to forget about North Carolina, especially with everything that just happened in Florida. Um, but this is not something that's going to stop next week and you're hearing about supply warehouses that are full that's a good thing because these supplies are going to be needed for months and months and months and donations are going to stop coming in so yes we're stockpiling a little bit um but we're also running out of things i mean we have a ton of food and water that's great and people need that and we're passing it out and it's it's get it's going to use but we need generators we need diesel we need off-road diesel we need fuel we need propane we need kerosene we need propane heaters kerosene heaters we need socks we need sleeping bags we need medications there's there's a, a huge list of things that these people still need and they're not being donated so um if you're looking for a way to help out and uh, I, I can get you in touch with that. You can send it directly to us, uh, Jack Stables. We have a fund that is going directly toward uh, the relief out here. Uh, but mainly, I just I want to get information out to you, to the public about what's going on out here from someone who has been there firsthand on the ground, boots on the ground, and has seen it. And you're probably not going to watch this far into the video anyway, but they need help. They need our help. And I don't know why the news is not covering this in an accurate way. Uh, but, and, and I don't, like I said, I don't want to get into any crazy theories or anything, but these are just the facts. You can draw your own conclusions. And so, yeah, you know, again, these, these are the facts and she's trustworthy. She feels trustworthy to me. Uh, she feels like a really nice kid and uh, genuine. And again, there's so many people that we know from this area 
And, you know, I, we still haven't gotten uh, a message back from very close friends that did make it through the initial part, but they are in tenuous help and, uh, health and, and now haven't been responding. So, you know, that's very, very disconcerting. Again, I'll put this link up at the top, uh, Jack's Stables. So, you know, what we see going on and winter coming, I mean, it's, it's a cold area. You might not think Appalachians, it's not like uh, some areas of the Rockies are going up to Canada where you're talking 20 below or anything like that uh, at this time of year. But it does stay very cold there. In fact, uh, the summer I spent there, I don't think we saw more than like a, a few days in the mid 80s. Uh, and the reality was, it was it was down around freezing a lot uh, a long period of time uh, elevation you know this is not not the easiest place to survive if you don't have a home or a shelter as this person is saying two inches of snow in banner elk north carolina I, it's such a gorgeous area uh and there are a lot of people um that have gone there because they felt it was going to be a very safe area uh, yet again you can see there is going to be really no particular zone uh, that's going to be bulletproof so to speak and meanwhile over here we see elon musk and you know it's interesting that again everything that he makes is seems to be shaped like those draconian reptilian ships the the uh, cigar shaped ships yeah absolutely great energy from spacex fans in mexico and you know of course nobody trusts anything so when you get down to it you know a lot of people again uh, aren't even believing this thinking nah that's probably not real either you can't trust anything besides what you see yourself firsthand and you know now we've seen enough firsthand that we know We've seen a ton firsthand. Now, this was a 6.0 quake that hit eastern Turkey about an hour ago. No reports of injuries at the time of filming this. This is an area, though, that has had a huge loss of life from quakes in the past. This one was 10 kilometers uh, deep. And, you know, thankfully at this point in time, no lives, no lives were lost that we know of. But over 2 million people are displaced. This is in Nigeria with flooding. It's it's not just us. It's not just, you know, North Carolina or Florida that's had atrocious flooding and, and bad weather. It's all over. And here the situation's really bad. 2 million people are basically homeless. Uh, they're in temporary shelters. They're having to bail 10 million school kids across um, Nigeria, Mali, Niger, and the Congo being kept out of school due to floods. Well, the reality is, again, uh, indoctrination into the system. Well, I think, I think a lot of people could do a lot better homeschooling. But at the same time, what you have here is areas that are being flooded out. And, of course, that's also going to affect the food supply. This is this is everywhere. This is, you know, basically uh, that mud flood scenario. And, you know, there there are those out there that say that this is just simply a 6,500 or 12,000 year cycle. Uh, and, you know, leave it at that thinking it's completely natural. But no, it's not natural. There is a natural cycle. But what you're seeing is not natural. And in fact, you can see this right here. This is the 70th anniversary of the first hurricane seeding experiment 70 years ago. And this is an old, you know, this is an older article too. 1947. This was 1947. They were hurricane seeding. What were they dumping in there? They changed their trajectory. Look at how they made it go and do a hang a Yui, so to speak. Yeah, uh, they completely changed the 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 track, and look how it just whoop, went straight inland. They were using dry ice, and this hurricane uh, hit Savannah, Georgia. One person died in the storm surge. 
two million dollars in damage done in Georgia, South Carolina. Now that's nothing compared to the storms that we're seeing now. But the public was outraged because they knew about this way back then, that scientists had caused the storm to swerve into Georgia, and lawsuits were thrown around. And, and you know, again, 99% sure there was a doctor here, Irving Langmuir, issued a statement, 99% sure the storm had changed course due to the seeding. So, oh... C-O-N-S, piracy, what are you talking about? Anybody that brings up that term is is really obtuse, doesn't have a clue about anything. It's it just, when somebody brings up that term, it's like saying, I'm ignorant <laughs> and laughing about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's just um, so much out here and uh, there's no truth, no truth going on. I mean, these people, they are being forgotten and I definitely don't want... Uh, North Carolina to get forgotten. It's going to get cold. Pe more people, more people are going to pass. Uh, we just we cannot lose sight of North Carolina. And, you know, for that to be, this is so sad because, yeah, it, I thought it was labeled a safe place to be. And isn't that just like the control system? Those, them. yeah, those telling people to go somewhere because it's going to be safe. And then, boom, look what happens. You know, again, it's just well, it's the system. It's not even that they told somebody to go somewhere. It's just logical deduction that was thought of as being a safe zone. But what they've done is they've sabotaged safe zones. You know, when you look to the four corners, it's thought the four corners is going to be safe. But you look at all the fracking. It's a ticking time bomb. There's fracking all over the place. This person went into their backyard during, uh, during Milton and is taking a photo and a video of smoking on the ground why is the ground smoking dry ice dry ice refer back to the article cloud seeding dry ice they use dry ice it's in this article talking about what was done in 1947 they would crunch it up and just push it out and it could actually steer uh, storms now the technology is is a lot more intense nowadays but still doesn't mean they wouldn't use some of the old technology especially when you have something that looks to be <laughs> acting like dry ice on the ground uh, yeah and this again you can't trust labels so here is a doctor dr. Sabine Hazan uh, who was recommending a lot of her patients rebuild, rebuild their gut by drinking kefir every day. And she herself was drinking kefir. And then she went to check and found that it didn't have what it was supposed to have in it. And in fact, she went back to the health store and got 26 of them. Only three of them, only three, had actual uh, bifidobacteria in it. And that's mislabeling that is you know very much um well it's lying straight out but again what's the fda good for absolutely nothing positive that's the reality of it same thing with the cdc who uh the whole system so you know again this is why uh, they don't want people drinking raw milk but uh, there is a push and uh, more states now are allowing uh, the sale of raw milk nature nature simply nature has has the answer for everything and most things are imbalances so it's all about kind of bringing balance back to the body and here you go a simple clove tea kills the nasty bacteria in the mouth expels mucus from the lungs support the immune system and it's just ginger cinnamon cloves and of course filtered water um, because again <laughs> they've done studies showing how most cadavers in the united states have completely calcified pineal glands so when you have people that are sleep deprived because again you need your pineal gland functioning properly you need the melatonin and you need the serotonin uh, the melatonin is is a feel-good thing it's going to elevate your spirits you know when you declass when you decalcify your pineal gland besides picking up like intuition uh, and the ability to perhaps start to use your literal third eye you also are are helping yourself sleep 
and also boosting your mood. They don't want this for many reasons. You know, again, they want us dependent on, on you know, F-A-R-M-A to get us up when we need to be up, get us down when we need to be down. You know, they, they want you completely dependent on the system. And everything that they give has side effects, which most of the time is far worse than whatever they're trying to help you with. Look to nature. You know, this is the original plan. This is the plan from uh, the real creator, not not the system. Mm-mm. I know, definitely, definitely want to get some of these things in your house just to have them, just to have them through cold and flu season. And we are all about trusting the immune system to do its job. It can, as long as it's not being severely sabotaged. So what are we looking at? We're looking at straight lines. Um, we're looking at some, you know, definite 90 degree angles. Uh, which this th- these don't look like they would be natural structures. This looks like this is planned. This is deep in the Amazon, and it's been grown over. The reality is we've had so many um, so many different civilizations that aren't even mentioned in our history books that have been completely wiped out. And way more advanced in their understanding than what we are at this point in time. In fact, we've had extraterrestrials living amongst us most of the time, uh, coming and going, even in ships. People saw this, and, and, and there are some remembrances of this in certain indigenous people's quote-unquote myths and legends, which, again, a lot more accurate than anything you're going to get from the media. And, you know, we've had a lot of people on this planet at different times, and then there's all of a sudden not that many. Yeah, you know, when you look at this, you might say, oh, gosh, what is this, a scary alien movie? No, that's just what an ant looks like. Can you imagine a six to eight foot tall ant? I mean, the strength. I know. I mean, this is where the scary movies get their information directly from Mother Nature. This is really horrifying. And could you imagine they could just pick up your house and toss it around? And then the technology that's going to ooh and ah us for the next phase. You know, again, there once things settle down in this time period, they're going to try to beat you into uh, the cities and giving away any sort of uh, authority to self-determine with the technology and the promise of uh you know abundant breakthroughs and and science again it, it's it's such a old under misunderstood thing that by by most people i should say again you guys totally get it uh, problems often can be fomented just so you could finally get that uh answer to the problem out there but as we know, their answers create more problems, and it's really all about just profits and control the entire time. So, you know, again, they will appear uh, to be giving us miracles, but the reality is, you know, Mother Nature has had those miracles there all along, and we don't have to accept, uh, even in many cases, what's, what's called terminal illness. Uh, we know firsthand so many people that have overcome and we've shared their stories. We've done videos on this and, and, and we're just, you know, two people out of so many that know people that are consistently overcoming diagnoses given to them by the professionals. Well, you know, if, if you go along with the script that's being laid out for you, it's not going to look good, but if you say no and you try uh, to embrace the natural side of things, I really think more often than not, you, you can restore balance and harmony to the body. Absolutely. Because again, the body doesn't bring about consciousness. The consciousness created the body. This is really, really cool. I didn't see this while Mike was putting this together. Unconditional love is not an emotion. Unconditional love is a multidimensional energy field. And that is so true. 
love is a thing and I was trying to explain this so it's really interesting that uh, Mike found this when I was uh, in front of source love was tangible love was a thing it, it was not an emotion it's totally different love overtakes all it overtakes everything love love is a thing and this kind of explains that a little bit better because we are definitely lacking words to to describe um it says we are multi-dimensional infinite consciousness incarnate in a physical body for a period of an of intense experience on the road of evolution we don't die because we cannot die energy is consciousness and energy cannot be destroyed only transformed into another expression of itself that is so important to remember when you realize that you are not your physical body but the infinite eternal consciousness giving life to that body your vision of yourself and your potential is expanded beyond measure and um, that is a really cool thing when you are able to get outside of this body and see the truth of it all and understand that this down here it, it is the matrix and we are only able to escape to a certain degree but we are still in the matrix and there's a natural and an unnatural matrix and you know that's the other side of the story as you see these uh, farm animals living the good life it's it's great when somebody is willingly giving you a back rub you know i don't think there's many people that would turn that down oh that's the cutest thing and you see oh, they're all getting along just fine we can all get along just fine oh by the way have you ever heard the alarm of a llama <laughs> it sounds like a squeaky toy. That's where they get those recordings from this guy. Absolutely adorable. As always, guys, thank you for your support. We couldn't do it without you guys. Keep putting out the positive vibes again. You know, it's not bad to plan for the worst and then put out the intention for the best. We are in the thick of the storm, but again, they're not going to they're not going to su succeed. It's just a matter of how much damage do they do? Source bless and namaste. Namaste.